In this video, I share my methods for creating a complex mold and advanced techniques in an easy to understand tutorial. So we're to the point now where we're going to start to mold this. I'm going to be using Smooth On Rebound 25 with the Thyvex to thicken that up. But the first coat I'm going to put on with uh, just the Rebound. So I'm going to omit the Thyvex for the first coat. Okay. I have predetermined where I'm going to slice the mold. So I want to cut it down this way. And this is good to do before you have the silicone on. I like a game plan. So I'm going to come down this arm and down the trochanter. And I'm going to follow this cloth a little bit. And I'm going to hop over, dodging this fold. You know, every dip and valley is going to be more work to clean up instead of just like a, a ridge that's way easier to clean up and especially for the foundry if you start cutting through stuff like this the foundry is going to charge you for it you know what i mean that's going to come down across this ankle straight across and i'm going to bring it back over to this line which is the like the apex of the circle of the base here the cylinder and right here on this side also so what I'm going to do is bring it down this side and I'm going to hop over a couple folds, unfortunately, not too bad though. I'm going to run over this edge and this is a very shallow undercut so we don't have a problem there. And I'm going to bring that over to here and then back down across this side and I might even bring it over slightly. I might bring it over the front here like this and I am going to cut over the date of the numbers. I'll try to cut between them uh, but you know don't cut over the signature. People can um, like at the uh, foundry they can recreate the numbers that's not quite such a big deal but to uh, copy your autograph could be troublesome so it's just better to leave it alone. And then across, I have the line here. So that'll give me a section that I can pop out of here without having to line up the rubber after it's sliced. And that'll give me a line over here that I can pop. So on the back side, on the front side, this will all be part of this section. And then this section will uh, come over this way and come off. Now with the face, I'm going to obviously cut between the uh, neck here and this arm. And in this region, we can see that right in here. I'm going to slice that. But I'm going to bring the slice over the jaw. And maybe not too high up. I'm just going to slice up the face. I'm going to stay off of these lines here, these linear style lines, because um, if those mismatch, it's going to be much more trouble to get those to match. It's really easy to get organic planes, you know, to hide that. But trying to get lines to line back up could be very problematic. And you don't want the wax worker or the tooler to have to deal with that. So I'm going to cut on the face right next to it and then angle it. That'll be easier to clean up than cutting across that line. So this little doodad, this is going to, there is a, a wire, my calipers read um, 5 64ths and or is it 5 30 seconds? Regardless, I took the measurement of the wire and drilled a hole accordingly. That'll make a nice snug fit so that the arm isn't flopping around. Then I just cut a board, or a piece of wood rather, scrap wood, and cut a block, glued it down after I drilled the hole, glued it, and I just have some scrap on the feet. And all this does really is make it so that I can get underneath of it easily without trying to pick a board up off of the table like this when it's got silicone on it. So the silicone will run off, and that's not so much a big deal, but I can at least get under there and pick it up easily. This one here is because this arm is bent. 
you'll see that once I get it on here. And I also have a drilled hole here. So I got a general idea before I glued this together. And that's what that is. So the arm will be on here. And the idea that it's at an angle instead of flat out is because when I pour, when the arms are on here, just pretend with me. So now the arms are pointing this way. I want air to be able to come out easily. If this arm that's bent is this way, it's not going to be so much. I'm going to have to tip it and tap it, and then I've got stuff coming out of here. I want to keep the material in there. And uh, so this is just kind of like a, a gravity feed. But if you want to cap it and put it in a roto caster, it's not such a big deal. But anyway, this will help a lot of the air come out of the fingertips. So the sphere, what I've done here is I took my calipers and I read the base of the screw here. So I countersunk that. What I'm going to do is run this into here. Okay, so the idea here, I want to put this screw into the seam. I don't want to do it here because then I have more seam and another spot here to clean up. So I'm just going to put it right there like that. And then I'm going to get a little worm of clay. And I'll put that around there. And then I'm going to glue this down to its own board. So as the silicone pours over, um, you know, I can use this seam line as my existing part line when I uh, pull, when I do the mother mold on top of the silicone. I'll take off the mother mold and then I'll slice, do my thing. So that's how that's going to work. The cube, what I'll end up doing is going across this way, following this edge, cutting across the middle again, going across this edge. That way, this comes apart very easily. If you cut across this way, you're going to learn a lot. Okay, So yeah, if you do it this way, that's good. And if you want to go real crazy, create more work for yourself, but this will come apart the easiest, just follow this line. And you have your pieces come apart. And it's probably the easiest to hide the seam that way. But if you just go across here and across here and follow that and that, that should come apart pretty easily. There might be a little resistance that way, but uh, taper your silicone a little more, and that should fall right out, and then you can stretch your silicone and pop that right out. So there you go. And you can put a feed anywhere. So like the feed spout on this one, So that's going to be that line. This will be this line. Then I'll follow this edge and that edge. And I'm going to probably cut another one inch dowel. You know, so obviously without the ball on it. And then that way when it comes apart also, you know, it releases quite easily that way. And then you can cast it like that. This one I do recommend putting in a rotocaster because uh, you're going to have air wanting to get caught in here. So just plan on cleaning that up. You'll be lucky if you don't. You know, even this is a good rotocaster if you have the patience for it. Just make sure you put a cork in there. So that's that, okay? And when I put the arms on here, I am going to pack clay around here and then cover this with clay because these will end up being the feed sprues. So as you can see here, I have the arms. I have a L marked on this one and an R just for the sake of the mold. Once it's demolded, sometimes we can get turned around. So R and L. So you saw how I had those pieces of wood. Well, I put the wire in there and I had to make a coil of clay and kind of gently sandwich it down until I could get the other clay packed around it. And um, I took the liberty of doing a little more surface cleanup that I couldn't see when the arm was attached. So this step isn't quite so necessary. Um, this is more for air 
uh, just to kind of escape. So I took a piece of armature wire, and armature wire is very, very soft. So I made four little balls of clay, one, two, three, four, and connected those to the peak, peak points, and just figured out the wire to bend it and make it kind of graceful at the same time. And that should assist. So when essentially, this is upside down, uh, if it comes in here first, see what I'm saying? This can kind of help route so as the material is coming in, this air can go up and allow more opportunity for these tips to get filled instead of the material coming in sometimes and the static electricity causes the air bubble to get trapped. So there's a little bit of that like tension, friction, whatever you want to cause it that traps the air. Uh, and this helps reduce that. I'm not so much worried about this, but this could be a problem as well. I might make a little piece of clay there. I'll just make a, a little ball and kind of turn it into a, a, a short little worm and connect this thumb tip to this hand and that can easily be broken off and this can be cleaned up so easily um, a lot easier than trying to rebuild a finger that had air in it so that's the idea with that not necessary but it could be very helpful and especially if you're going to be doing like investment casting um, this is kind of already built-in venting so if you were to cast this say in wax and then open up this half of the mold um, you could connect a piece of wax there use the one mold half as a cradle connect the wax and then pop this thing off and then you can put your uh, gating and sprue on it and this will just help you know with uh, venting you put a little vent coming off of these anyway so that's that so this ball like I said we want the seam to be, you know, we don't want to create a second seam per se. So when I go to cut this open, I'm going to use um, that as a point of reference and that, that, you dig it? So this would be one half, this will be one half, and here's this cube. So this was three pieces of um, I believe it was three quarter inch insulation board and I just used a fettling knife I got the clay warm enough that I could smear it I'm not really worried about these shallow recessions not so much this stuff should be able to get sanded down pretty easily and these little air bubbles coming up um, but I did want to fill the major gaps and holes and the screw heads which are holding this down because this can be sanded you know with a sanding block and this can be made true again nice and square so I know this is going to be my parting line I can still see it under the clay here's a parting line and then I just drew a cross section this way just a tiny little mark and that's going to be my point that I'm going to start my screw so there we go. That's how we're going to do that. Next stage, we're going to start throwing some silicone on there, so hang on to your hats. I just want to say that it's a good idea to have some, like, one-piece molds ready to go. So this is just a cup, and this is a for a different project altogether. But I have my piece inside of... It's, it's on the board, right? It's ready to go. This is a cup that I've cut the top off of and hot glued the bottom. So a lot of times when you're applying your layer of silicone you're gonna have excess silicone and it's good to have these one-piece molds ready to go so when you get all this extra slop instead of wasting it in your cup you can just pour it in there and get the most for your you know silicone is borderline affordable so um, have this stuff ready and make make your dollar go as far as it can.
this is the next day. Okay, so this setup, pretty good. I was concerned, I wasn't sure how old this silicone was. I actually forgot I had this kit in my cupboard and I ran across it. Um, but I've got some bigger containers that I'm going to be using to finish the job. So this ball has um, Vaseline on it. So I didn't want to do too much work on it because I didn't want the Vaseline to get mixed up in the silicone. Not sure how that would have worked. My hands are clean right now, meaning I just washed the oil off of them a little bit ago. You don't want to be leaving a bunch of oily fingerprints on your silicone before you put on the next layer. That could act as a resist and then delaminate. So, but I did touch it to see, you know, it's set up. That's good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave this here as a gentle reminder. This is in the description. You can get these kits through Amazon.com. Um, you can buy what you need that way. All right. Let's take a look here at these really quick since my hands are already getting somewhat sticky. My big fear with this one was getting air bubbles trapped between the fingers. So I just used my breath and blew between where I saw the opportunity for air to be trapped. So if I saw like a little air bubble kind of hanging out in there, I would blow. And if you don't get those air bubbles out, that's going to show up in your casting as a little booger and you're gonna to have to chip it out every time, which it's not that big of a deal, but it's just more details that you know you prefer not to do. So this looks pretty cool. This looks good. That's a first layer. And the Rebound 25 in particular, um, I mean, look at that. I stirred this up for a long time in the cup, a lot longer than you probably should. They, they said mix thoroughly. So what I found is the more that you mix your parts together, you're not going to have to wait as long. They tend to react faster. So there's times where I've panicked, where I'm like, oh, I've only got a 90 second pot life. And I whip it up, but I don't whip it up thoroughly enough, and then it never kicks. So make sure you get it mixed thoroughly. If you ever do resins or plastics, you'll feel it start to get hot, and you know you better start moving, because it's going to set. This here, by the way, this paintbrush, this is cached. That's garbage. So get a box of chip brushes. You can get like, I think, 50 or 100 of them for like 20 bucks, you know? It's just part of the gig. And uh, I want to point this out really quick. You see these little air bubbles? You can try to pop these uh, with an X-Acto blade. I mean, just ever so gently and maybe you'll have a chance of wiping the next layer of silicone into that little bubble. But if you don't, what happens is when you pour a wax in there, that little bubble will expand because of the trapped air, naturally, you know, heat causes things to expand. And that'll leave a little golf ball type dimple on the inside of your piece. So that's the risk with that. But if you poke a little hole and wipe silicone, you're gonna reduce your chances. And that's with waxes. And with waxes, they're easy to repair. Uh, plaster, it's probably not going to be a big deal. So that's okay. Now, with this block, I wasn't trying to get the whole thing deliberately. I was trying to just get the five sides and the base going. Underneath here, I can see the rest of it and I can set it like this and get in here and do this side now. And this actually creates a nice little edge, a little flange type to help trap that next layer. So I might put something in there and then leave it sit like that. And since this is a cube, uh, I might just do Thyvex on the second layer since I got all the detail on the first layer. but I don't want to just put a thin layer and then turn this over and start wiping Thyvex. So I might pour the thin layer, let that sit, and then uh, do the Thyvex on this side, and then flip it back over and do the Thyvex, just because of the tendency for gravity to pull this down. 
and I'll end up getting my scissors, my little cheapo studio scissors. I just cut these things off. You can cut them to the length that you want. If you think that you want something that's like going to be a quarter of an inch, you can use these as little uh, guide points. <coughs> so you know once you're level with that, you're at the right uh, right thickness. Got it? All right. So I want to do two layers, and then the uh, the third layer will have thigh x. You can do thigh x on the second layer if you want. But what I'm recognizing is that uh, there's such a thin layer on the first layer. If you do the second layer with thigh x, which there's nothing wrong technically. I mean, with the physical properties of it, you'll get desirable results. However, it could create really thin areas where there's like recesses between the fingers. If you smear over that and say like create a pocket, then you have nothing but a paper thin layer of silicone between uh, a second layer with Thyvex and that. So the idea of putting on another layer that just runs and coats it, it's going to create a thicker skin. Got it? Okay, good. Alright, let me get this cleaned up and we'll uh, try to get things going. Okay, <clears throat> so these are the big, big mamas right here. Um, this is about, I don't know, probably about 230 bucks with shipping. Somewhere in there, it might have been 215 on the low end. So the idea is that uh, these need stirred. If you go, these are directly from the manufacturer, uh, but you can get the kits over there on Amazon, right? So uh, they recommend that you stir up part A, use its own stirring stick, and then part B, stir up with its own stirring stick, and then you mix them together and stir thoroughly. The other, one that I mixed, you know, shortly ago, was out of this small container, and as I had mentioned, it sat for so long, uh, this more viscous material was in the top, and this stuff in the bottom almost had like a very kind of starchy quality to it. Um, it settled out. There is platinum in this stuff. It's either platinum or tan, I'm pretty certain this one's platinum. Uh, so, and it had a gray kind of tint to it. It's important to get these mixed back together. That's why they have you do it. Um, you'll, you'll know by how thick it is on the bottom. Now normally, you shouldn't use it when it sits this long. They say, you know, it keeps in uh, proper temperatures for about six months. Um, and it's been years. I'm pretty certain. Maybe it's only been over a year. Anyway, I've got to stir this up. I've got to open this and stir that up. I don't want you to watch me do that, so I'm just explaining ahead of time. Make sure you get that stirred, get this stirred. And then when I come back, I'll already have it in the cups. So maybe I'll let you watch me stir that. Does that sound good? Okay. I just want to point out one more thing. Um, last time I mixed this into this. When you do that, you notice this will start to take on more of a kind of a peachy color. Well, in order to make sure that you have it mixed thoroughly, it's better to pour the dark into the light when you have, um, especially a transparent cup, because when you pour that in and you start stirring, you're gonna see white patches where you've missed stirring. So that's just a little bonus tip. I mean, I, I hope it helps you out. That's the whole idea here. So on this cup, it's five inches high. I filled it to the half, two and a half inch mark, knowing that the it's tapered toward, you know, from the bottom to the top. So I knew I wouldn't overfill it. So one of my professors back when told me his father was um, a painter in the sense of painting the walls of a home. And he said the way to mix the paints 
because you know paint separates when you open the can it's all kind of settled out is to take your stir stick and dip it in and just gently kind of lift you know you sweep it through and lift and as you can see this is doing a, a really good job now there's going to be air that's whipped into this if you have a degassing unit you can put it in the degassing chamber okay you can see bubbles starting to rise up cool thing about silicone is that the bubbles will rise to the surface this stuff has a thicker viscosity because it's meant to be brushed like kind of upward and such however um, the air bubbles will not come to the surface as quickly so be mindful of that What I'm doing here, I just want to point out really quick, is that if you shine this into your silicone, it will usually reveal in the recesses if there's trapped air. So I'm just looking for air bubbles. Check the pupils. Make sure there's no trapped air. Check the nostrils, the corners of the mouth. If the ears are exposed, you may even see an air bubble in the little registration marks. There's probably air bubbles under any overhang toes. And another spot is uh, the overhang. And as I look, I can clearly see that I've missed my sculpture entirely. Hopefully I'll remember to come back and look at that again. You know, to make sure there's no trapped air there. But other than that, I think we're looking pretty good. As you can see here, it has a nice coat on it. This is a first coat. Let me go ahead and get that out of the way. So, 
I just, for the record, want to state that my hands, I've just washed them. So the only thing that's on them at this point is the residual goo from the gloves. Anyway, they're oil free, that's the point. Uh, the reason why I mentioned that my hands are clean is because I can touch this now and see that yes, this is cured. But if my hands are oily, say like I just ate a fish taco, and I touch this, that area, there'd be a chance that that area and any other area for that matter that I touch would not stick, you know, the next layer. So this has two coats. This looks pretty good. I'm very pleased with this. I put this one upside down and filled this bottom because this side needed done. And it was starting to come over, it was starting to come over the edge. Just a little bit, probably wouldn't have mattered too much, but then I took some leftover silicone and with my stirring rod, I, you know, slathered it on there like butter, but I knew it was running and it was dripping off. If I hadn't put down a little block of wood underneath, this would be completely adhered to the board. And the reason why I didn't want to do that is because the uh, top already has a layer of silicone on it. And if I were to try to peel this up to put it upright again, I'm afraid it would delaminate the top just a little bit and I don't want to do that. So by putting it on that block, I can get under here. Oh, it looks like there was a little bit of silicone on the, uh, just push down on the silicone next to it as you pop it up. That should allow that to stay down. There we go. It's looking pretty, pretty sweet. Trash.
going to take a quick minute to show these. So this is three layers. This looks really good. Really happy with that one. These will be the arms. And it does have a slight vent that connects. So the wax or plaster will be poured in this way. Happy days. The cube is done. Happy days. And the sphere is done. This one I ended up just taking my finger and dragging this around and smearing it to make a nice, nice shape. Can you see it up here? All right, so good news. I think we're done. So that was a pint that I mixed up. Those cups are one pint each, so half, half, one pint. I mixed in the uh, 5X after, and then I put in the colorant. The colorant being called Blood Red, I tried to keep the tones warm because it's an orange silicone. So the orange silicone, uh, obviously when you mix it with something like green or blue, it's going to turn gray. It's just not uh, as appealing, say, as something that's more like this. But I added the color tent so that I could see where I've been and where I haven't been. Where you see these breaks, um, you know, that's the old layer. And obviously the dark layers is the new layer, but if it had been the same color, I wouldn't be able to see where I've been. And where I came close on some of these ridges, I just gently kind of buttered it over. I didn't want to really build up like, you know, a quarter of an inch or so. Um, but, you know, there we go. So, um, this is the fourth layer. So two were just poured on directly, two with Thibex. And then I took what was left in my cup, I smeared it around to help give this more of a consistent flange. And then I took my finger in the glove and kind of gently smeared it around and then went in some of these recessed areas right in here and just tried to smooth it up a little bit. So that it just had a, a nicer appeal to it. It was less ragged and jaggy. At, and uh, when it lays inside of the mother mold, it's going to be less prone to kind of like being out of shape because of the uh, snags and stuff. Now it's rounded, it should just lie hidden there. Um, so you're going to find that this is like frosting a cake, and this almost comes with its own skill set using your uh, spatula. Uh, like a frosting spatula would be a very nice tool to use instead of a mixing stick. Um, but anyway, there we go. I'm not going to use keys. I'm not going to use registrations other than the overall shape. And the reason why is because the registration is going to be the cut. I'm going to create like a zipper cut um, that kind of moves down in this sense. So that in theory on the inside of the silicone it's going to be a straight line and on the outside it's going to be a zigzag. So as I drag it through, I'm just going to take the tail of the knife and fishtail it as I drag it through. And that should hang on itself like a zipper. That's the way I've been doing molds for a while now, and it's, it's pretty nice. You get a really clean registration. Every once in a while you get a stinker where the, the tooth will fall through, but that's a much easier fix than a whole you know section that's fallen through. And uh, that'll be in the next video. So this one here, you saw how I mix up the silicone uh, and how I've done all the parts. Let me grab the other parts to show you. But as far as like a complex uh, sculpture, sometimes you have to simplify the form by cutting the parts off and just assembling it afterwards. That's not an uncommon practice in the old world. Sometimes they would uh, cast multiple pieces and drill holes and use pens. So this is how we're going to do this, and uh, when we do the mother mold, it's going to be a three-part. We're not going to try to pull this apart in two. It's going to be a little too complicated. So I'm just uh, planning on a three-section mother mold, and I'll show you how I do that. We're not going to use um, cards, you know, some people staple cards. We're not doing that. 
Um, I'll show you how to build a flange and we're going to use, uh, for the mother mold, we will end up using, for the mother mold we'll end up using uh, hydrostone, but before we apply the hydrostone, I found a new technique that is, uh, makes the uh, mother molding experience so much more enjoyable. And we'll do that with the plaster bandages. So, all right, stay tuned. Please like, please subscribe. Please check out the description down below for items that you might find useful in your studio practice, okay? And of course, if you really found this useful, please share it with an artist friend of yours. And that helps get the word out. This is free education. And uh, when you share it and contribute, comment, like, all these types of things, that helps me get found in the algorithm and brings it to other people like yourself that might find this information useful. So I applaud you for sticking around. This was a long video and uh, thank you very much. Please check out these other videos.